Hey there, welcome or welcome back. My name is Emily and today I wanted to share with you the five things I've learned from doing the 100 painted heads challenge so far. If you're new here, then you may not know that I'm currently undergoing a challenge of painting 100 heads or 100 portraits in this sketchbook. I wanted to do this challenge quite simply because I wanted to improve my portrait painting skills and if you want to take part, I will have a link to my Pinterest board of references down below. Okay, so I'm 65% done this challenge. I wish I was a little further along, but I am far enough that I have definitely improved and I have actually learned some things, so let's get into it. The first thing I have learned is that putting your focus on one area of practice in art will help you improve in that area faster. That sounds kind of obvious, but I am someone that likes to jump around from a thousand different things at once rather than focusing on something specific that I want to improve on. So this challenge was really pushing me to focus a little bit. I do get bored easily. Having a frequent, not necessarily daily, but a frequent art practice will lead you to incredible results. It's astonishing looking back at the first portraits in this book. You will see in the final tour how drastic the improvements have been. So use this as your sign to put aside your fear of failure and just start a frequent practice, whether it be a 100 heads challenge like this or just simply sketching in your sketchbook every day. Whatever it is that you'd like to improve at, I promise you if you stick with it, you will see improvements and that will even motivate you to keep pushing further. The second thing I have come to learn from this challenge is that when you're improving your artistic skills, it is not a straight upward line, but a graph with ups and downs with a general upward trajectory. There will be days when it will feel like you've gone backwards and are getting worse rather than better, but even on those days, you are learning and sitting down to paint wasn't a waste of time, I promise. Even if you didn't produce good results, your brain was making connections the whole time and learning what works and what doesn't work, and that comes from trial and error. That sort of leads into the third thing I've learned, which is that there truly is an ideal mindset to be in when you're painting. It's a state where you are both hyper aware, you know, really paying attention to each step you take, but have also let your gut and intuition take the reins a bit. I find when I'm in this state, it feels like somebody else is controlling my body. Like there's a very friendly and talented artist ghost that is moving my hand for me. <laughs> I've found that the biggest improvements and the biggest breakthroughs tend to happen when you are in this sort of flow state. And when you're not having a good day and you're not in a good mental place, it can feel even worse when you're painting and not getting good results. And I think the best advice I have for this is to be gentle with yourself, as gentle and as encouraging as you would be to a friend or a fellow artist. And if it's really not your day, then don't force yourself, switch to something else, maybe go for a walk and come back in a fresher state of mind. If you don't do that and you're stubborn like I am and you fight through the bad painting session, at least embrace the mistakes. You know, just be okay with the fact that it didn't turn out how you wanted and really try and think about what it is that you don't like about it and maybe what you would do differently next time. Okay, so the fourth thing I have learned is that the more you practice by following references and learning to see what is actually there, applying those things to your painted portrait, the more you do that, the more you learn how you can make alterations to those references. 
how you can exaggerate certain features, how you can make, you know, design decisions about your painting that comes from your knowledge of all the paintings you've done before, what you think looks good, what makes a visually interesting portrait. This is a way that you can make any portrait feel like your own artistic voice rather than a copy of a photo. You'll find little stylistic things that you realize you like and you just keep doing those things. I do want to make a video in the future about art style because I do get a lot of questions about that, you know, how I found my artistic style, and I think my answer might be different than you expect. But yes, let me know if you want a video on that. But that is for another time. Okay, so the fifth thing I have learned from this challenge and the final thing I will talk about in this video, and I think this thing was a little bit of a breakthrough moment for me, and maybe if you were stuck thinking about things in the way that I was, this will help you too. So it is that there is no single formula for creating a portrait. There is no 10 steps to create a perfect portrait. A portrait can come about in thousands of different ways, thousands of different, you know, variations of steps and still be an incredible portrait. You can get good results from so many different paths or methods and that can feel scary, but it's also exhilarating. You know, you can go out and try different things and that's what I've been doing in this challenge. You know, starting a portrait with the lights instead of the darks or starting with the mid-tones and then going into the darks and then the lights. And sometimes you look at a reference and you'll start to feel what that specific reference needs or how that portrait needs to be constructed. And I think that comes from honestly just practice. But basically what I'm saying is don't feel like you need to stick to a rigid step-by-step -step process. You can break the rules, you can take risks and see what happens. It is a cool way to discover what you like and how you like to work. Let the reference guide you and be in a place where you are open to trying things and failing. And I think that's really what a challenge like this is for. And that's not to say that it can't be helpful to, you know, look at how you approach a painting and try and break that down into steps to follow for your next paintings. I do that and, you know, I share steps like that in my videos. That can be helpful. But I do think for the most growth, you do need to be open to breaking your own rules or other people's rules, but maybe you've set rules for yourself and you didn't even realize you set them. <laughs> Be open to breaking them and see what happens. Okay, I lied. I lied. There is a sixth thing that I have learned, and this is a big one. I don't know how I forgot to include it at first, but here it is. And it is that you must not fear the so-called ugly stage. I found that it is actually better to embrace the ugly stage. For me, at least, the ugly stage is a crucial part of the portrait painting process. I like to think about it almost as a building block, something that is necessary to support whatever comes on top. I think it's also an important factor in being able to depict skin that feels real and not, you know, flat. It is one of the ways that you can give that sort of glow from within look to your portraits. So when I say the ugly stage, I mean those initial layers of color that are usually rougher and looser in appearance. They play a supportive role for the layers on top and give the painting a sense of life, a sense of looseness. I've found that with practice, I have learned how to almost see into the future of what the portrait will look like, and it's because of this that I have learned and have been able to trust the process and understand that the ugly stage is a necessary building block or stepping stone for the painting. I think it would be helpful for you all not to expect that your painting will look good for the entire painting process. And I don't know, maybe hearing this will take the pressure off a little bit and you can learn to embrace the ugly stage just as much as those fun final steps.
Okay, so I think that is it for this video. I do hope at least one of those things was helpful to you. I hope you aren't like, man, Emily, I knew all of those things, but I hope at least watching my painting process was enjoyable for you. <laughs> Let me know down below if you have had any artistic breakthroughs recently or you've learned something that has really helped your artistic practice. Share it with us down below. I know we all want to learn and grow. I want to say a big thank you to my channel members. Your extra support is so, so appreciated. Thank you so much, you lovely people. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already and leave the video a thumbs up if you liked it. I will see you all very, very soon with another video. Bye-bye.